Welcome to the Pro-Black Perspective, where black problems are addressed with black solutions. Your host tonight is the author of the Pro-Black Compendium and Zuberi and the Maroons of Ma'a, the Pan-African nationalist Oni. Oni, what are we discussing tonight? Peace, 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 family. How are you guys doing? You're tuning into the Pro Black Perspective on KWB's radio. Um, I'm glad for you guys to come to this show today. We're going to be finishing off the notes for this next book. This next book is looking really, really good. You know, we're, we're, we're actually exploring this new idea about family first. And I'm just going to show you guys one of the more important things about um, I want you guys to subscribe and I want you guys to share it. It really is that um, I'm shadow banned. You know what I'm saying? I'm shadow banned in the sense of I posted a video on Twitter. I got 3,000 followers on Twitter, which is not a lot, really. I mean, it's 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 a respectable number, but compared to the other people on Twitter, it's not, it's not, a, it's not a good number. Regardless, I posted a video and I got 57 views on Twitter to 3,000 followers, right? Um, I posted the same video on YouTube, okay? YouTube Shorts. I got 127 followers. I, no, sorry, I got 127 views, and of course, I got half as many followers on on uh, on on YouTube as I have on Twitter, right? So on Twitter, I have about like I said, 2,900, 1,500. Uh, I mean, 2,900. Um, on on YouTube, you guys can see it's probably like 1,200 or something, right? Um, I got 50. I got 127 views, right? Uh, on TikTok. Okay, I just started a TikTok. I can't remember why. I think I just wanted to see somebody else's TikTok account. I decided to post this on TikTok. Uh, 27, um, 27 followers. Okay, 27 followers. Or 28 followers. I got 257 views. All right. Now, either, now it's possible. I'm not even going to say it's because TikTok is uh, more popular. Because I don't think it is. You know, it's really hard to find my videos. You know, I don't even uh, tag them on TikTok. What it is is that I'm not shadow banned yet. Okay? So this kind of puts a responsibility on you. You know? Share, like, subscribe. All right? Share, like, and subscribe. Because without doing that, the reality is this. The algorithm is against this message. The, and it makes sense. Look, it's their business. It's their business. They don't want you sabotaging their business. They don't want you being the face of their business because you're not a money maker for them. You know, you are a, 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 a scarer of, of, of um, advertising dollars. You get what I'm saying? That this is, these are business platforms. They are trying to propagate a certain, um, a certain set of investors. They're trying to attract a certain set of investors and, you know, me, Bob Black, blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter. The point is this. They, they have this tool in front of us. They're going to shadow ban us. They're going to do things behind the scenes. They have to, right? Regardless, we are trying to get the message out. And because we're trying to get the message out, I urge you, you know, make sure you like, subscribe, share. But on top of that, make sure you like, subscribe, and share for the other podcasts as well. The, more, the further their message goes, the further all of our messages go. All right. This is this is a whole podcasting network where we're we're doing it. So make sure you guys do it. And that without further ado, I'm going to tell you, hey, check them out. Hello there, dear listener. We hope you're enjoying this lovely discussion. If you're not already aware, this show is part of a podcast network called KWAZ Radio, a Pan-African nationalist and Garveyite network come to showcasing the rich and varied thoughts of African people. We have an exciting lineup of shows that we think you'll enjoy, including the Peter Metzen Podcast. I think black people require too much buy-in. Like, we, we constantly have to sell black people on things that are beneficial to black people. The Pro-Black Perspective Podcast. I'm fearful that our people are not really studying how to get ahead, you know? And we're kind of, you know, continually staying behind. The Harsh Reality Podcast. To me, it don't matter. matter. I think people are so dumbed down. It wouldn't matter what you reveal to them. They feel 
are in the matrix. They're in the simulation. They're going to keep doing what they did. They're limits. So it to me, it don't matter, man. The Learning Curve Podcast. Sexual access has never given you economic empowerment. The only person who has ever been economically empowered by a sexual relationship is the wasp and his woman. The Cathedral Cheek Show. When we start rising up to fight for our own, I guarantee you they'll stop doing what they're doing. I guarantee you they would have let their brother go. They they was waiting to see what black folks was going to do. Brother Bakari Podcast. Black people love to claim folks that don't, that hate them, right? They're a slave master, and they are ashamed of who they really are. The Forecast Radio. Like, if you pray to the same deity as, like, your enemy, and they, that God blesses your enemy more than you, you may want to reconsider who you're praying to, you know. And Tanzan, African mind. Because generally, um, a welcoming of everyone, sometimes to my consternation, I think that they should be less, you know, If you love our podcast network, we would be grateful if you could rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on social media, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website at www.kwazradio.com for more information. Thank you for tuning in. And now, back to the program. All right, all right. So, yeah, shout out to the matron. Matron's here. Um, shout out to matron. She's saying facts about shadow banning. Shadow banning is real. And it, 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 and look, like I said, it makes sense. It makes sense from a business perspective. Like, let's say if I have a platform, right, you could upload videos and stuff, right? I could obviously delete all the pro LGBT videos or behind the scenes, I could just stop promoting them. I could stop connecting them. And you would think, hey, you know what? The LGBT will get the message. You know what I mean? They will just get the message and stop posting. But the thing is that we don't get the message. We keep posting. <laughs> you know what I mean? So we just we just put them to the side. Sure, you can share it. Sure, you could, you know, but even your followers are not going to see your shit. You know? And I mean, obviously, some people might hear that and be like, oh, my gosh, you know, you shouldn't do that to LGBT. Sure, sure, sure. You might think that. But guess what? That's what they're doing to black folk. That's what they're doing to Garveyites. You just heard KWZ Radio Network is a Garveyite, Pan-Africanist network, right? That's what they're doing to Garveyites, because why should they not? You understand? Who's bringing in the white dollars but the people who are in Garveyites? So, so, and, and I'm, I'm not saying, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, hey, you know, every Pan-Africanist is as unpopular as I am, because that's not true, obviously, you know that. Um, but notwithstanding... Uh, I'm telling you, hey, get this message out, you know, if you can. Um, and you can. Just get it out. Because this, these are the kind of things, this conversation right here is actually much more important than um, most conversations we have. I'm just going to let you know that. So this book, we're, we're, we're going through the list of different chapters for this book. And what's good about this, this is, a ma- this is not a master class per se about writing, but this is a, a class on structuring your writing, right? In the sense of this, you have an idea for a book, okay? So get out some chapters, get out some ideas you want to write about, right? And then after you start writing, you're going to start seeing that the theme for the book or the, the tone for the book comes to you as you progressively elaborate on the different ideas that you want to elaborate on. And you begin to see what ideas you really want to elaborate on versus what ideas you don't want to really elaborate on. And so now I have this, I come to this chapter called Chapter Africa, okay? And here's where I can speak towards the material wealth of Africa, including, but not limited to, the energetic possibilities in its rivers and its sand, right? More or less what one would find in Chank onto Job's work, and I'm not necessarily confident in this at the moment, okay? So what is, what, is, what am I talking about here? If you read, um, I can't remember the name of the book, but I think it's like Black Federation of Africa, something like that, right? Um, Chank onto Job has a book, um, Check on to Job has a book where he, hold on a second, I just gotta, I just gotta call this thing right here, but Check on to Job has this book where, all 
All right. So Take on the Job has this book where he um, he talks about the different energy, like different possibilities for producing energy in Africa. Like he's like, hey, look, I'm looking at the Senegambian River and just seeing the differential rate of the velocity of the river. You could definitely install a dam here and that dam can um, uh, like that dam can make it so that the uh, like, like energy is generated at a certain rate. Because when you compare it to a river in Europe with the same sort of or a similar sort of velocity, it's done there. Right. So there are some infrastructural development things that you want to discuss with Africans. After you have their attention, you want to actually break down some science to them. Right. Some engineering science so that we can understand as a people that there are possibilities all around us. You know, even if you ask me, hey, Oni, why did you go to Tanzania or where did you want to go when you went to Tanzania? Right. I didn't just want to stay in Dar es Salaam. I ended up just staying there because I don't know the language, like I told you. But I didn't want to just stay in Dar es Salaam. The, the, I wanted to go to Rufiji, especially. And people in, people in Dar were like, what would you go to Rufiji for? There's nothing there. There's nothing there except for a giant waterfall. You understand? There's nothing there except for a giant rushing river. And it's like, if you don't have the, um, if you're not exposed to the scientific, the science, right? You think there's nothing there. When everybody else understands that a giant fucking waterfall is a power generator. It's a huge power generator. And this is, a, this is why this is a really important chapter. Because one of the things we do not pick up on, right? And I mean, sometimes people tell me that this is a good thing for me to repeat. So I'm going to repeat this again, right? But one of the things that we pick up on is that... Uh, I gotta, I gotta worry about this thing. Um, one of the things that we pick up on is that um, one of the things that we pick up on is that they, the the mineral resources in Africa, right, are not are 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 not necessarily valuable as yet. The material wealth of Africa is not universally valuable in Africa. This is one of the really distinct things that we have to process as a people, right? One of the distinct things that we have to process as a people because a lot of times you're going to get into conversations with people in the diaspora and they're going to tell you, peace, consider cheek, uh, uh, they're going to tell you something really interesting. They're going to say, why do the foreigners control Africa's economy? And the thing is this, the foreigners do not control Africa's economy. What the foreigners do is the foreigners have an interest in the material resources in Africa because the foreigners have the industrial capacity to use those resources or they have the economic, um, they have the economic necessity for those resources. Most people on the continent do not have an economic resource, uh, an economic necessity for those resources. Like, in fact, 90, 95% of us, if we had a, a bowl of coltan, we wouldn't know what to do with it, except for sell it to white people. I'll tell you the truth. Because you might say, well, your coltan is necessary for making microprocessors. Okay. Do you make microprocessors? No. So then, like, it ain't got nothing to, like, it's, it's really just a bunch of dirt for you. You see what I'm saying? Can you construct microprocessors? I mean, r r recall that even China has trouble producing uh, microprocessors of that level, of that caliber. China, the, the, the country with, uh, like I said, one of, the, uh, one of the most intelligent populations on the planet. That's not African. Okay? Uh, that said, even they have trouble making microprocessors. You, most of us, do not make these things. We don't, we don't deal with semiconductors. Okay, a lot of us, you talk about, hey, look, man, you know, you got, you probably have a lot of copper, you have a lot of tin, you have a lot of steel, you have a lot of so on and so forth. If you are not a productive people, and, and a lot of us, unfortunately, are not productive uh, in the production field. If you are not a productive people, a lot of these things do not mean anything to you. And so if somebody else comes along and says, I want that, you know, you say, okay, well, for how much? Or you say, sure, take it, it's, it's trash. 
Now, now we might come to this idea of, oh, well, you know, for how much, that's good. But this is why what when our education does not include this. So when I include it inside of a book, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm continuing the education that was necessary for us as a people. So we're going to start talking about, um, um, we're going to start to, oh, so Ishra Kepri, um, Ish Kepri came through, it's says facts, we need civilizational machinery as necessary. Yeah. Uh, so what, what we're going to start talking about is this, 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 uh, this development, this, this, this new idea, this idea that, hey, look, these things that you have, they are good for this, this, and this. So that tin that you have, tin is used for this, this, this. That cobalt you have, cobalt is good for this, 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 because of this, this, this. Now, obviously, you already know that's going to be shadow banned again. Now, and, and, and again, I said I'm not really necessarily confident in this because this, 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 this deep mineral evaluation, I, I don't even have that education. I just know it's necessary to put that message out there. And I know some people will say, well, if you don't have it, then I could just get it by my own. own. Okay. But again, this book is not for necessarily just you. This book is for everyone who wants to read. Readers become leaders. And so you want every leader to have, say, have the wherewithal to say, hey, you know what? This thing right here is valuable. And the thing is this. Here's the, here's the, here's the, the big thing about it, too. A lot of, there's a lot more than what we know of. There's a lot more than what we know of. We only know that this is what the white boy values. And we only have access to, to, to saying that this is valuable because uh, it's, white, it's valuable to the white boy. Notwithstanding that, uh, and that's not to say, hey, you know, let's share his values and nothing like that. No, we're going to look and see why this is valuable. And then we're going to make it so. We're, we're going to try. We're going to. We're going to. We're going to advance. Uh, we're going to progress on our people minds. Well, first off, this is valuable because this, this is valuable. Because this, because this. You find something different. Guess what? It, it, it's. It, let's see what it could do. Let's see what it do. Let's see if it's a semiconductor. Let's see if it's magnetic. Right. Let's see. How, let's see the the, the 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 rate of its magnetism. But, 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 but just going back, just to explain further about this whole, you know, oh, why people control your economy? No, no, no. They are dealing with mineral extraction. Your entire economy, the 5% the, the, the of your economy is, is really about mineral extraction. The only difference is that this white boy overvalues the minerals. Right? Compared to whatever else you're doing in your daily life. For instance, let's say, uh, what, what might be, like, for instance, when I was in Tanzania, right, what was valuable for me was transportation and and food. Okay, what was valuable for me was transportation and food. Right? But that's not going to generate some big, you know, oh yeah, look how look how economically productive these people are. That's not even a part of the GDP because it's like, you know, it's just it's basic. Food and, and transportation is basic. What 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 comes from this uh this idea of of Oh, this white boy control your economy. He's not. What he's doing is he's just extracting minerals, and he and it's a it's a high valued minerals for him, highly valued minerals for him. But ninety five percent of people have nothing to do with it. So this white boy's not controlling your economy per se. He's just buying minerals at a reduced rate, but he's just buying minerals. That's it. And we have to get out of this mindset of this white boy is the entire economy. He's not. Oh, because the white man, you know, like, oh man, you know, the government is being played by. No. Well, we have to come to, and we're going to talk about that, but what we're going to have to come to is this, is this, is this reality that we can form economies um, independent of this white boy. But we have to start, uh, we have to start acknowledging, we have to start looking at it from our own perspective and our own metric. Right? Um, Matron says we need to explain how valuable all things are. There's no such thing as trash. We just haven't learned to upcycle everything. Exactly, exactly. You know, because see, cause five, 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 like, like, for instance, sand can be useful on a beach, and so sometimes people will move sand from um, one area to another area, or even sand can be useful for making glass, and you know how glass can. Um, 
uh, be used in solar arrays. So what happens is this. Sand is usually considered garbage. Nobody's protecting the sand, per se. Okay, nobody's protecting sand. No, 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 I'm not saying nobody, but you know what I'm saying. Like, you know, but, but sand is actually something that some people will, 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 well, yeah, it's trash. It's trash to use, trash to me. But if y'all make a solar arrays, it is something that's very useful. Sand, sand, in fact, I, I have a, 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 a punching bag, right? Uh, one of the one of the best weights that you can uh, uh, fill up the punching bag with is sand. In fact, what I can tell you, in fact, matter of fact, if I'm being honest with you, you go into any hardware store in America, and they're selling bags of sand. You see what I'm saying? So, so like what Matrix said, because sand is dirt. In fact, in fact, even dirt has value. You go to the same freaking. Uh, uh, I don't know about the carpentry store, but you go to a floral store, and they're selling you dirt. Am I lying? Am I lying? No, <laughs> I'm wrong. Am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? <laughs> am I lying? I'm lying. Uh, <laughs> but like they sell you dirt. Everything can be valuable, but the thing is this: What do you value? What are your values? So when I talk about the material wealth of Africa, we have to acknowledge that. Hey, you know what? Let me explain it. Oh, uh, let's talk about it. Because this is not inside of our vocabulary. This is not inside of our mindset. This is not inside of our education. And then we're going to complain if other people make a lot of money off of the dirt. Oh, man, you, you got all this dirt. Well, all right, all right, they, they keep buying dirt from us. We, we, we sell them our dirt and then they get rich. You know, we, we should sell them dirt for more. No. Like, what you should do is you should you should have your own industries. That's it, period. Point blank, period. You should be selling the plants. And, and, and we could do that. We can get to that. You know? We can get to that. Um, anyway, that's chapter of Africa. So I think that's going to be a good chapter. I don't know um, how much I can uh, accomplish with it. But I think that that is a good chapter. Just to, like, if I could just get the ball rolling. Just a few ideas, dirt, sand, coltan, cobalt, tin, steel, iron, you know, whatever the, whatever the, the, the main extracts, just explain what the uses are for these, um, how they sort of so forth, how they can factor into the economy, because a lot of this stuff is, is valuable, um, but again, value is in the eye of the um, beholder. It's like beauty is in the eye of the beholder, value is in the eye of the beholder, Right? And, and we just have to recognize that all around us, like, like, like Machen just told us, all around us, um, there's value. All around us, there's value. But we, and we just have to tune our, our minds towards seeing it. You know, there could be a plant that's out there that we think, oh, it's bitter, it's useless, all that kind of stuff. And, and the plant, turn, come to find out, makes good yellow dye. You see what I'm saying? It makes good yellow dye. Or, or we might see a little critter and think, oh man, this critter is so useless. Turn, come to find out that thing eats, you know, it eats rabbits. You know, <laughs> like it just, it's just a really good hunter of rabbits. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that's the kind of knowledge that we gotta, we gotta start coming to with. Um, because if we don't, you know, we're gonna be left behind. Um, Consider Chick says, why is Africa waiting for the West to tell them they are rich? Exactly. You know, that's it. You know, and, and that's it. Like, we have to really, like, we have to do a good shakeup. We have to do a good shakeup. And 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 the, the, the trouble is that most of us are not equipped to do that shakeup. This is why I'm writing this book, because I say to myself, hey, look, you know what? We can do this shakeup. We can do a shakeup. We just have to equip ourselves with the with the with the with the wherewithal to do this shakeup. Because because say what we will, I can tell you this. In fact, there's this video. Um, this 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 uh this you know I guess mixed guy. I don't know, but he makes this video about the rich guys in Atlanta, the rich people in Atlanta, right? And the reality is this: when you interview these, when you see these rich guys in Atlanta. Even though they got the money, they don't have the. They don't seem like they have the political wherewithal. 
So it don't matter if you have the money. A lot of people just don't have the political wherewithal. A lot of people don't. And this is where we come in. Because we, we you know, you know, so this 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 sister sister is uh you know, she fancies me, right? Um so she sent me this image that's circulating, I guess, around whatever circle she's on, right? And it's it's four people standing in front of a picture. And all of them standing on different things. So the guy who's standing on so one guy is standing on a lot of money. And he's standing on money so high, so much that he's he can't see the picture in front of him per se. He only sees the top part of it. Okay? The next person is standing on only a set of books. And so he uh, he could see, I don't remember what he sees, but I think it was something like um, maybe a little too low. You know, he's standing on um, he said it on books, so he could probably see just a little um, on, on the bottom. Because somebody who's standing on nothing, and all they could see is the wall. Okay? And the person who could see the picture the best was the person who stood on money and the person who stood on and, and books at the same time. Right? Uh, like, like not as much money as the, the person with a lot of money, um, but I, I guess more books than the person with no books. I don't know. Uh, but regardless, uh, they, like, I don't remember the picture. I probably should have pulled it up or something. But um, regardless, that's the image that they are uh, like. Like that's the image that this person shared with me, and it's like, yeah, you you have to stand on your capital, you have to stand on your wealth, but you also have to stand on your intellectual health. And the thing is, this that a lot of us do not have that intellectual health. We were talking about this yesterday on Shoot the Breeze. Make sure you guys check out Shoot the Breeze yesterday. Really good conversation, much more positive than usual. Even I would say it was it was one of the better. Uh, one of the more better, one of, one of the better chill conversations. But why I'm 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 pointing this out is to say, uh, and I might I might show you guys the image just to just to just to you know clarify. But it's like yeah, get get y the book knowledge is no. Is, one of the things we said on the Breeze yesterday was that most people stop reading after high school. Or stop reading after college. Or if they are reading, it's only social media. And like very few people are actually reading on social media. I don't know if you guys can see. I, I barely have any um, views or something. But but very few people are still reading. Handful of us. So so that's just another another thing altogether. Anyway, let's keep going. Um, so the next chapter should be chapter universe. Um, actually, you know what, let me, let me, let me see if I can pull up this picture really quickly so that you guys can see what I was describing. I don't actually remember off the top of my head, like I said, you know, somebody just sent it to me and it was, you know, you already knew it was like a foreigner type shit, so I just didn't even, um, I just didn't even, uh, you know, care to process it. Uh, well, let me see if I could, uh, post this up. So we're going to, all right, here it goes. So it says, look. Uh, what are some scary examples of two kinds of people? Two, why not four? I believe a picture is worth a thousand words. Scary, huh? But very true. Here's another scary example. Edit, to be honest, I never expected blah, blah, blah. So the person says life, and it's from this guy at Ugo Jesse, right? So there's a, I guess it's a window. It's not a picture. There's a window, right? And there's a person who's standing on his money, and he got a lot of money, Right? And he only sees, he see, he barely, he could see, he sees a good view, I guess, it's, if it's a window. He can see pretty far, actually. He has, probably has the best view, I don't know. But um, I think the objective is to say that this guy has the best view, right? Because it's not a picture, it's a window, it looks like. So, you know, um, it is what it is. Point is this, the person who stands on nothing, you can't see anything. You ain't got no book learning, you ain't got no money, you, you looking at a wall. If you got a lot of money, you could actually, probably actually can see pretty far, but it's not the best view. Regardless, right? Uh, you standing on books, you can see more than the guy who ain't standing on anything, but you still not gonna be able to see much. Whereas if you standing on money and books, you can see out the window. And and what's what's good about this picture is this: that it's not even an African picture. That actually makes it good. That actually makes it better because it tells you, hey, look, it's not 
us. It's not me. Like, if I made up the picture, I, you know, just me saying, hey, look, this is me. This is what I think, right? Um, if black folk made this picture, it could just be, hey, blah, blah, blah. This is what white people are making for themselves. They're saying, look, son, don't just stand on money and don't just stand on books. And if you, if you have a choice between standing on money and standing on books and money, no, you said I stand on more money or less money, and, but, but, but more books, then choose that. Choose that balance. That's what it is. That's what it is. And it's not, it's not me telling you this. I want people to understand that it's not me telling you, hey man, you know, books are really important. That's not me. I mean, I tell you that, sure, but that's not, it's not me. This is, these are, this is even Wazungu. This is the Eurasian saying, you know what? Make sure you have a book, you have book learning. Otherwise, you will not see clearly. But I'm going to just leave it at that. I'm going to just leave it at that. We're going to go to the next chapter. Right? We're going to go to the next chapter. Uh, let me see what the comments are like. Um, oh, look, it's Barack Obama. <laughs> Somebody said. Black Indy Dev is here. Oh, Black Indy Dev. Yo, shout out to Black Indy Dev. Uh, I, I made a... I'm trying to make some video game. And uh, Black Indy Dev has been uh, supportive about it. So shout out to Black Indy Dev. Uh, Mr. Black... Reparation Nation is here, so greetings to Black Mr. Black Reparation. Shout out to everybody. Itch, I just said Itch Kepri's here, but Itch Kepri's here, so shout out to y'all. Um, appreciation and all that, right? So, Chapter Universe. Now, Chapter Universe is going to be a little bit controversial, because I realize this. A lot of people don't know this about me. Or, you know, even though I try to brag, a lot of people don't know this about me. I got an astrophysics degree. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I realize a lot of us also are confused about astrophysics. You know, the book that I'm reading now, it's, it's actually a pretty expensive book, right? Uh, Temple of Man. Um, I can't remember how much it was, but it could have been, you know, it, it was pretty expensive, right, for a book. Um, notwithstanding that, it, it goes into this idea of anthropocosmos, this idea that the human is the center of the universe type thing, or the, uni or the human is a representation of the universe. And this is kind of like the core of most religions, right? So I do not really agree with it, obviously. Um, I think it's just, you know, human arrogance in a sense. And, and for that reason, I do want to have a chapter that discusses the universe. Because this idea, you know, kind of, now it, it does relate back to, well, allegedly it relates back to ancient Egypt, right? And so that's why it's valuable. But at the same time, we have to um, come to terms with, um, like, the, the, the like evidentiary lifestyle that we've come upon, you know? Um, that essentially, you know, once upon a time, people might have believed in, um, you know, if you do this sort of dance, you know, the weather is going to change, right? That might have made some sense once upon a time, but we cannot necessarily say, you know what, because our ancestors may have believed that, and I don't know if our ancestors did, but let's say if they did, we can't necessarily subscribe to that same view today. You know, we're not necessarily going to say we know why the weather changes, although we have a pretty good idea on, you know, pressure variations and so on and so forth. Right. But it but but, you know, the whole well, this person was dancing and ergo like, let's not. You know, maybe you can do some, uh, you know, <laughs> maybe you could say, hey, look, enough people dancing and sweating. You know, that's going to cause some sort of pressure, you know, heat, that kind of thing. Maybe you can do that. You know, a lot of hydration. <laughs> like, that's a possibility. I ain't going to hold you. You know, that's the butterfly effect. But uh, as far as, you know, the rationale of, oh, well, this is uh, deities and so forth, that's where, that's where you could, you know, stop. Um, um, that's where the, the, the comparison or, or the reality can stop. Uh, either way, we're going to start talking about the universe, right? Um, Mr. Black and Richard says, you make video games. I used to work for Namos as a European product manager. My name is in Tekken credits. Oh, that's pretty cool. Tekken is Tekken is uh, uh, Tekken is what's up. You know, a lot of us don't know about Tekken, uh, but Tekken was a video game where a lot of people, for the first time, saw Quaparera. You know, and, and that's 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 a shame on our part, right? But it kind of speaks to if you don't have control of your education, what are you going to learn? You know, so a lot of us come across Capoeira. Or even black people in video games, and we can shout out, uh, uh, Mister, Mister Black Reparation Nation, right? We could we could shout out him for that. 
You know, I mean, I'm not gonna say that he made the call or put that cooperative person in, right? But I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was there. You know, I'm sure he was there. And 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 and, and he made and he made. I think his name was Eddie Long, maybe. I don't know. But he made that dude probably kick a little harder. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, kick high Hachi's butt a little harder. You know, so you, we gotta we gotta we gotta recognize that a lot of times our elders were doing things, right? Our elders were doing things, and things were happening, and 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 it, it was out of our control, but we inherited their goodwill. And and you got to recognize people, and I, and of course I'm not even gonna I'm not gonna say hey look he he's the one who did it I don't know, we don't know maybe he knows right but 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 look at that see that look at that look at that he says yes you are correct I was the one who put Quapa in the game I told the Japanese look at that. We got a freaking living legend here. Because I, I remember when I was younger, we was going to uh, the pizza store. And they had an arcade. And yeah, I would play the black character. I didn't even know what he was doing. I was like, this guy's half dancing and all that kind of stuff. But here we have a living legend who would have inspired me. You know, he's all the way, I don't know where he's where he's from back then. But he's all the way in England now. And he's just walking around where a lot of black youth around the world uh, we're like, uh, yeah, I'm going to play this black character. I want to play this video game and I'm going to play this black character. And what is he doing? What is his style? Why is he moving like that? And there you have it. You got one of the brothers right here who is like, look, make that man do do this do, do this style. And a lot of black youth around the world, black Indian dev, dev can probably tell you, a lot of black youth around the world were like, uh, damn, that's cool. Oh, I'm grateful that I'm, I'm I'm there, and it's like, look, being in the video game is not that big a deal, but but at the same time, it is a big deal. You know, it was a big deal for us as little kids to see ourselves, and a lot of that is possible because of the people before us. And we and it's underrated, you know. Um, so I mean, I, I could I could I could I, I can't make a, I mean, I could probably make a, well, you know, maybe a Tekken one. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a little harder for me because I, I don't, I'm not really good at 3D design. So uh, maybe I could do like a 2D version. But it, it's pretty easy nowadays because of, of the engines available. Like you can make things pretty quickly as long as you know how to animate. Or as long as you know how to draw, animate, or 3D model, you can pretty much make anything pretty easily now. Um, because uh, like let's say that the engine that I use is Godot now. And it's just really streamlined. It's not optimized, but it's streamlined, you know? Um, other people would use uh, Unity or, or Unreal Engine. Uh, and they're pretty basic, like, for, for the things that you would want to do, they're, they're pretty basic, especially if you could, like, fine-tune it. But a lot of people can now make um, single, single, like, single development games pretty, uh, like, pretty straightforwardly, I would say. Anyway, so, chapter universe, right? So I think I should use my astrophysics degree and knowledge to explain the origin of the universe and the evidence thereof, right? I think my rejection of religion is stemmed, or I shouldn't say stemmed, but um, I guess, I don't know, rooted in my uni understanding of cosmology. What's more, the cosmic radiation background is fascinating. So what I want to do is I want to start talking about the, or like the universe. Because a lot of us seem to have this impression that the universe was created for humanity, for humans. Once upon a time, like I think it was, matter of fact, one of the maybe last week's Shoot the Breeze where Bonner said, hey, look, none of this stuff could happen by accident. You know, you can't go into a junkyard and an explosion happens and then you drive out in a Benz, right? Like how could a Benz come about from an explosion or something like that? You know, and, and the way how humans are so, um, you know, like the way how we are, how we are, we're so complex, we're so, um, so on and so forth, like that couldn't have happened by accident. Something, it has to be some sort of designer. And the reality is this, and I said it this way, if you flip a coin a thousand times, right, right, it could be that when you flip a coin a thousand times, you're going to get ahead a thousand times. You're going to get ahead a thousand times in a row. It could be. It's, there's a possibility that you flip a coin a thousand times, you will get ahead a thousand times. You know? It's unlikely, most, most of what you'd expect is 500, 500. But say you go uh, 10, you know, not 10, like shit, you're gonna have to go quite a few, right? There is a, there is a chance 
that it's just going to be head, 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 head. Right? On the scale of the universe, on the scale of the universe, so much has happened, so much will happen. Yes, you can coincidentally get something that, 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 that makes sense to you. The universe is 14 billion years old. 14 billion years old. Okay? Uh, there were... The, the, even the galaxy that we're in is just a child of another galaxy from earlier, which is a child of another galaxy. Like we're a third generation galaxy, if I recall correctly. The cosmic radiation background, what that is, is that that is the energy field, like there's the evidence of the universe having been smaller once upon a time and more energetic once upon a time, right? So basically you look out in space and you look out 14 billion um, light years away and you find um, that every, every direction you look, right, the universe, I mean, there, there's uh, radiation go, go, uh, uh, retreating from us. Just everywhere you look, th there's a limit to the size of the universe and it's 14, or I guess, you know, if you do a, if you do a cubic, if you do a um, 3D projection or whatever, it's like, like basically you're within a sphere that is 14 um, uh, billion light years away in every direction. And, and what's, what's interesting is this, that you might say, well, doesn't that mean you're in the center? Right? Because obviously if you were not in the center, it would be uh, biased. And that's, that's, the, that's the weird thing about it. It's that most people say, look, everywhere in the universe is at the center. But of course, we've never left Earth, so we don't know. We, we never left Earth, so we don't know. But, but, but there's so much going on astrophysically. Like, I could tell you about how the, 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 the galaxies are all moving apart from each other. And eventually, the idea is that well, within billions of years... Uh, 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 a being like possibly let's say well, this galaxy might not exist but a being in our position at this moment in this time and space moment or what have you right would probably see no stars in the sky because everything is moving away from each other um, and eventually nothing will reach the earth you know so it's it's a really interesting um um you know, reality about how, how gigantic the universe is and how inconsequential the universe is, unfortunately. You know, because remember that even the dinosaurs used to roam the earth and they're no longer here. The Neanderthal used to roam the earth and they're no longer here. The, the meaning and meaningfulness of, of life um, is not as, as, as deep as a lot of us anthropocosmo cosmic people would believe a lot of it is just happenstance and then as far as the question of alien life is concerned we have to remember that all life on earth is alien the life on earth it's 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 reason came from outer space not like from a spaceship or something but like on a on a comet or or, or something like that like on one of those ice comets might have just had um, the rudiments of life. And it, as it collided on Earth, that life then flourished on Earth. But what that's telling you is that there are comets all around the universe that are flying around with the potentiality for life. And all they have to do is land on somewhere that has life. Some people, I think, even reason that this life might have came from um, Mars. You understand? And what happens is that life now comes and develops and evolves and develops and evolves and so on and so forth. And, and eventually, you know, we had, we had dinosaurs and, 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 and whales. You know, we had dinosaurs and whales and, and tigers and saber tooth. you know. And it just keeps fluctuating and changing. And eventually, you come down to the hominids and the, and the humans. But it's a whole different planet. And what's interesting is this. Here's another interesting thing. You have somebody who's 5,000 light years away, right? So you have another entity on this planet who's 5,000 light years away, okay? Um, 
if they looked at earth, they could, if they could see earth, if they could see earth and they could look at what's going on on the planet right now, they're 5,000 light years away. If they're looking at what's going on on the planet right now, somehow, like they have the, 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 vi the vision capabilities to not just pinpoint this planet of ours, but can actually see small detail on the planet. You know what they're going to see? They're not going to see you. They're going to see what was here 5,000 years ago. So they're going to see a bunch of Native Americans or something. Like if you're talking about America. Or they might see the pyramids. And then if they were to travel from there and say, hey, you know what? Those people are building pyramids. Let's go see them. Right? If they were to travel, it's going to take them um, over 5,000 years to travel. Right? So by the time they, they reach here, so if they saw the pyramids uh, and, and they traveled here, uh, what's interesting is this. So the light reaches them 5,000 years later. So they, if they traveled at the speed of light and they saw the pyramids today, okay, and they traveled at the speed of light, they would arrive here 5,000 years after today. Okay, probably see a bunch of rubbish. I don't know. Right? <laughs> probably the humans are gone. I don't know. Right? But they would arrive 5,000 years later from today. But the thing is this, they cannot travel at the speed of light. Nothing, because essentially we talk about tachyon and tardion particles, right? I remember when I was younger, this is the thing that young people used to talk about. You know, nowadays we don't talk about this stuff. But when I was younger, we talked about, well, I don't know if everybody talked about it. I think my, my, my brothers and sisters were... Uh, were really scientific. Like, my brothers were scientific-oriented. So they, they talked about 4D, 4D and, and um, tachyons and tardions, right? But basically, the idea of tachyons and tardions is a tachyon is, is something that moves faster than the speed of light. And a tardion is something that moves slower than the speed of light. And they say a tardion cannot move at the speed of light. And a tachyon cannot, you know, like, like it's, its lower limit is the speed of light. Tardion, the upper limit. So what happens is this, if something moves, if something, like, in order to move at the speed of light, uh, or, like, basically, if you were trying to transport yourself to so forth, you wouldn't arrive at, you know, you wouldn't travel at the speed of light. So it would be more than 5,000 years later. But here's where it gets a little more complicated, because even if you're at 0.97% of the speed of light, which, again, deals with acceleration and deceleration, um, like, you, you know, acceleration in one direction, acceleration in the other direction, Right? What happens is a lot of time is going to shift and transform. It's, it's an interesting phenomenon, but it's very, very unlikely that you will engage with an uh, 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 alien life form. Not that they don't exist, but it's very unlikely that you'll be able to see them. Uh, it would have to be that you would look at something that was that way so many thousands of years ago. And then something would have to have been traveling kind of to you without the freaking cognizance that, oh, actually, it's not going to be there by the time I show up there. You see what I'm saying? It's not going to be there by the time I show up there. Anyway, so that's a pretty interesting uh, conversation. I actually should have talked more about religion there, but I, I didn't. Um... Black Indie Dev says, yeah, I'm working on a black Resident Evil or a Resident Evil style game with two black protagonists. The Planets by Brian Cox is a nice audio book to listen to. Bro, Black Indie Dev, you got to tell us what it is. Uh, black Indie Dev says, aliens beings probs wouldn't attempt because they'd, most realize, they'd mostly realize the civilization is probably gone. Yeah, exactly. You know? Exactly. Because... Because if you saw something 5,000 years ago, right, you know, Egypt and so on and so forth, you see Egypt, that's fine. The reality is this, Egypt is gone. But if you, are, if you see they're 5,000 light years away, right, it's going to take you maybe 10,000 years to get, uh, I mean, assuming, I don't know your technolo technological level, right? It might be that you don't get to that technological level, but let's say that you can move at, let's say, half the speed of light somehow. You could do that safely, right? It's going to now make you reach you 10,000 years later. So what happens is that whatever you saw 5,000 years ago is going to be, uh, it's going to be 15,000 years later.
You know, so 10,000 years from now. And, and, and I don't know about y'all, but there is no guarantee that we as human beings are here 10,000 years from now. And all of us are gone. All of us. You know, and so, you know, even that on the scale of the universe, that, that's the thing that really um, struck me when I was looking, thinking about the magnitude of the universe. That, um, And that's the thing I also wanted to say about the cosmic radiation background. This is a little bit on the interesting side for me, right? On the cosmic radiation background, you know, this idea is that, hey, look, maybe there was this big explosion once upon a time, right? And, and, and realistically, I think it was uh, 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 another um, astrophysics camp was making fun of this astrophysics camp and saying, oh, was it like some sort of big bang? And then everybody just kind of went along with it, you know? Um, so one of the speculations is, well, somebody, something initiated this big bang, you know? Um, and it's not necessarily the case that something did, but even if something did, it's not to say that that entity was now actively intervening after this explosion. Because here's the thing about explosions, right? You don't really know what's going on within an explosion on a micro level. And what it could be is that, and this is an interesting sci-fi you know, kind of twist, it could be that we're existing in, these, in an explosion. And this explosion just seems massive because we are tiny. Just like if you look at the scale of atoms and, and neutrons, right? Uh, we look at them as like like they like how long is their lifespan from their perspective? Of course, you could say, well, they're not conscious, sure. But that's that's your um, that's your paradigm, you know. So it's just an interesting. I'm sort of now. I'm not saying that I would necessarily include this in the book, um, but it is an interesting. Uh, feel to, to 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 consider just this idea of well what if like you know those explode like what if there was a giant explosion what's within it you know from from the scale from the from the from the from the scale even smaller than it and so what if this quote unquote creator this quote unquote creation is just a massive detonation or even if it's just a massive detonation within a universe before it which was the massive detonation within the universe before it. And you might say, well, well, you know, therefore there's something even beyond. But what if these explosions aren't really that meaningful? Like, like, like the bombing of Hiroshima. The people who um, bombed Hiroshima, the, the physicists who, who, or the, even the pilot who dropped the bomb, let's say, right? Are they actively uh, uh, processing whatever was inside of that explosion and what happens is this so one of the more important things about physics is this idea that um, time is moves in proportion to acceleration okay um, I can't remember I think yeah I think time moves quicker um, proportion to, to acceleration um, and that's why you would probably age quicker on uh, Jupiter than you would on Earth or something like that I, again don't quote me this was 15 you know <laughs> 15 years ago uh, uh, and I, I'll brush up on it. I'm actually going to read. I'm thinking that before I even write this chapter, I'm going to finally get to reading um, that relativity chapter. But um, time moves according to acceleration. You know, something that does not accelerate will not advance in time, essentially. Uh, let's just say it that way, right? And so on the scale of things, right, whatever is, uh, uh, let's say, not accelerating that quickly, right, has, from that scale, uh, uh, a different timeline, like a different time experience. I think the word that we're looking for is time dilation, right? Um, so so that's, that's really at the core of, hey, you know what? What if we are just these tiny entities within an explosion? But from the inside of the explosion, we see vast you know, energy changes that are probably happening at a very rapid rate from the outside. But on the inside, it's moving at the, uh, a time rate that we can understand uh, based off of our own optical 
nervous system. But there were our own nervous system that was developed within that explosion. You see what I'm saying? And then, but realistically, it's just a, a, a detonation in a war that we don't even know about. That's going to fade into non-existence, just like all explosions. You know, so it's, it's an interesting, um, <laughs> it's a little interesting damper. And, and, and you see, even what I just said, even what I just said, um, um, you know, those sort of speculations on the universe, that's a really common thing among our ancestors. You know? Um, so let's see. Uh, Black Devil says aliens uh, beings probably wouldn't. Yeah. So Mr. Reparation Nation says excellent to Black Idiot Dev, which is really cool. You know, Resident Evil style game. See, because I, I can't do 3D work, so that's why I, I don't, you know. But I, I wish I could. I, I really need to learn 3D modeling. Um, Black Idiot Dev says, Lil, what if the Civ sends a warning message about a certain trouble and the message cuts off? Yeah, right? I mean, like, you know, I mean, you know, and that's the thing, too. It's like, we have to realize that around this universe, a lot of black holes form or black holes explode. You know, like, there's actually a lot of explosions. <laughs> like, a lot of explosions. And, like, what if these explosions just don't mean anything? And this, some of them are just so powerful for whatever reason, right? That within them is a whole other universe. You understand? And then another explosion triggers, so on and so forth. And again, you might say, well, how does explosion really happen? And some people say, look, you know, a proton and an anti-proton. You know, energy and anti-energy, that kind of stuff. Or you know, matter and anti-matter. Um, those actually do cause random explosions. Just random, inexplicable, uh, super catastrophic explosions. And, and like, there's no, and it's, it's just a matter of, well, what's within an explosion? On this time, on a super slow time scale, because for us, again, it fourteen billion years passed within our explosion, right? But from the outside of an explosion, we know that it's not fourteen billion years. We know it's an instant. You understand? But again, it's all about time dilation. What's really happening? You know, from the outside versus what's happening in the inside. If you're inside of a spaceship, right, and you're accelerating right time is moving at the same rate like if you like you you guys see in the, the the star trek or star wars things where somebody is flying and then they just zoop out of nowhere like they just fly away boom in an instant right from the outside it looks like you just zoomed away right but from the inside it doesn't i mean i mean time is just moving uh in a certain rate it, it's a it's complicated to like. I don't know how to. Exp I don't know how to explain it except for I'll give you guys this uh, the, the the classic example of uh, a, to a a clock on Earth versus a clock that was flown around the Earth, right? So a clock that's flown around the Earth so many times is not going to match a clock that was stationary on Earth. I can't remember which one's longer or shorter, but the point is that the the experience of time. Or the experience of the, the 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 experience of seconds is different based off of um, of of how um, how fast you're moving and how how much you accelerate. Now again, there there could be uh, a rationale of, or a different explanation of well, you know, the, the molecules that control this thing is not is going to have a longer distance based off of so on and so forth. Whatever it is. Uh, uh, the experience of time is different depending on where you are uh, uh, or how much you accelerate. But, and the thing that makes all of our time um, seem the same is that we're all on Earth. But like as soon as you go on another planet, time moves differently too. Anyway, so or as soon as you get off a planet, time moves differently. As soon as you go into space and you accelerate away, time moves differently. As soon as you go into a rocket and you accelerate at a certain speed, time moves differently. And then time stays still when you're... Um, um, you know, cruising through the um, galaxy, right? And you might be cruising through the galaxy at a, at a breakneck speed, but by the time you have to slow down to get to uh, where you want to go, time is going to move rapidly again. And then so if you were flying towards Earth and then you had to slow down 
from your window, a lot of shit's going to be happening outside of your window. Okay? Like, Earth is going to go into fast forward motion to the point where, let's say, like, 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 again, that's what it is. Like, you could be, let's say you're traveling to Earth, like, like what, uh, um, like what Black Dev, Black Guinea Dev just said. You're traveling to Earth, and then you send out a message, I'm coming, right? Um, land, like, I'm coming. You know, prepare the, the ship or whatever, right? And you're speeding through space, and then you decelerate, right? You go from max, you know, you go from, you know, being a freaking flying missile into slowing down so that you could arrive on the Earth. As you're slowing down, the Earth, time is moving at such a fast pace on the Earth that whoever you were talking to is dead. You understand? It's, it's really complicated. Let's just put it that way. It's, it's really interesting, but it's really complicated. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but this might be the last um, chapter. So, yeah. So, chapter four gates. So, four gates is um, a really interesting concept, right? Um, four gates. And I hope you guys are interested in that universe talk. Because I think that's actually a pretty cool... Um, like, it's pretty cool, but it's not really spoken about so much. You know, physics and so forth, right? But anyway, four gates is... I know I've said I should include this tomorrow, but the other subject says projects... Uh, which can be included in the chapter on Africa. You know, basically what kind of good projects we can do. You know, glass manufacture, solar power plants, that kind of stuff, right? Um, this leads us to today. Mainly, I think of gated communities, but we have four tiers of, of groups and community is one, hence four gates, right? So this chapter may need to come early in the book, but I'm reminded of a Yoruba saying, right? Um, so we look at what the Yoruba say. And this is why it's really interesting. Like, this whole book is becoming really, really necessary and interesting so it says there has to be protection of the women women are the flowers of the garden men are the fence around them right and actually i think i should show um this video that i i i told you guys i i published let me see men blah blah blah, blah, blah. yeah i could show i should probably show you guys some of the videos that i've been publishing on youtube so maybe i should actually show you on youtube but it's on twitter now um i'm already on twitter so i said decided to go on camera this is social media is a trap. Um, my view on plural marriage is changing. This oh, is it. Not? Oh, I didn't have this whole video on. I only put down 50, 45 That's seconds. That's so stupid. All right, we'll have to look on uh, YouTube. Um, but anyway, so but we're gonna we're gonna go over that. So it says this chapter may need to. So men as fences also means men as the gate. Each of us should strive for a gated community, a, ga a gated family, a gated community, a gated nation, and a gated race. So what does this mean, right? Um, a gated family is obviously a home in which permeability is determined by the leadership, okay? So you as a man now, so, so we're going to get into masculine versus feminine, right? Uh, gender roles. This is something that we... We tend to strive over, but but like I said, I'm starting to get interested in this subject of marriage, right? Uh, hold on a second. I got I got to get into the subject of of marriage because um, I uh, you know like I said, some like like when you go to Africa, here's the thing, and I picked up on it. When you're in America, you are okay with dating, pointlessly, needlessly, not for family, but just for company. When you go to Africa, you really get this notion of, of marriage. And that's the thing that really troubled me the first time I went to Ghana, was that, like, you really feel like, oh, you know what? It would be nice to just live a peaceful life, you know, with a nice wife. Um, and so, yeah, again, when I go to Tanzania, you know, it was hard because, like I said, there was a big language barrier. But, like, coming out of Tanzania, you're like, yeah, you know what? I could use a wife. Like, if, if a beautiful woman, you know, wants to live with me and have children with me and, and just be there for me, I like that. You know, you don't, you don't have that in America. You know? It's, it's, I know that you don't have it, but it's really, 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 like, it's just not, like, it's not the same. Like I said, when I was younger, you know, I did have this mindset of, I need to get married, I need to get married, I need to get married. But, but, but in retrospect, you know, I, I might not have married the best woman. You know? And that's fine. That's fine. That's it, I, I did the best I could. Okay? Uh, 
But come back to Africa, it's like, yeah, you know what? I think, I think, I think we can, we can, we can, we can talk about marriage again. So, so what is a gated family? It's, it's obviously a home in which permanently is determined by the leadership. And so, we don't have to go into who's the leader between men and women. Man act as a fence. Woman act as a garden. That's it. So, so nobody comes in to threaten my woman and my children. Unless I'm dead. That's it. Same as a community. A community is a neighborhood of the same sort. Where nobody comes into my community to threaten our women and children. Our communities are collective of families. Nobody's coming into our community to threaten us unless all the men are dead. And the same with the nation. Nobody comes into our nation to threaten us unless all the men are dead. And the same with our race. But I, but, I, but, but I also thought over here, is this even necessary as a chapter? You know what I mean? Because, because we talk about nation, family, community, right? So I said, what about this concept as what about this concept as a concept for gender, though? You know, using that Yoruba wisdom to say men are fences and women are gardens. Ergo, the dichotomy of fence building and garden building on the four tiers of organization. What does it mean then, for instance, to develop a community garden or a national garden? What is a community garden? What is a national garden? A national garden is like maybe a university. Community garden could be a school. So you have the women now developing the school while the men are out there protecting it. You see what I'm saying? We, we now have a, a level of organization for our people. This is family building, nation, community building, nation building, and race building. right? And what's interesting, like I said, I put this up on TikTok. And this white boy is actually um, writing me in reply. And he's like, yeah, man, what you're thinking of, that's exactly what I think. We have to have these concentric circles, you know, in our own sort of organization. I don't know why this white boy is thinking about connecting with me. But again, I wasn't shadow banned there. I wasn't shadow banned there. So I don't, I don't want to be dialogue with this white boy. No disrespect to this white boy. Um, but, uh, but, but what I'm saying is this. You... I mean, yeah, make sure you guys share the content. Because this, this video is good. I, I, know, I don't know if y'all pick up on it. This video is good. So share it, share it, share it, share it, share it with people. So finally, I said, look, I finished the book. I don't have any more concepts to explore. I think this exercise has been fruitful. I do want to stress character building. But outside of this project... Um, oh, okay, the last thing was this. Outside of this... Uh, but outside of this, this project has come to an end. I'll do a follow-up video. That's today. So the sum of it is money and time management. Or good choices. You know, we have to, as a people, really focus on money management and time management. Um, that said, what I'm going to do is, first off, I'm going to open the floor to more questions, and then we're going to um, uh, we're going to uh, uh, you know, oh, we're going to see some of these videos. So Kenneth came through. So shout out to Kenneth. Uh, Kenneth says better score than us or better score than U.S. Right? Not 100 percent sure. What Kenneth means, but uh, appreciation for Kenneth uh, for coming through. What we're going to what we're going to do, and like you, feel free to explain, Kenneth. I don't I don't mind. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of these videos. Oh, at least maybe two of them. Um, one on my view on. Well, I guess we could actually look at the four of them that just showed up. <laughs> That's mad wild. So I got actually a lot of. I didn't even realize I have a lot of comments and um, on one video. Um, I didn't even know how because I didn't even I didn't even see any of the comments. Um, I don't. I'm a, I'm actually afraid that I'll. I'm afraid to look at any of the comments at this point because that was the one video that was a little bit more rough. Um, this is my this is my uh, channel um, view, um, and you can see that these are like the YouTube shorts I just put up. Um, this one says African spirituality and religion explained in 60 seconds, and this one's less than three minutes, so we could see this one. Um, this one's actually pretty. No, this one I think is actually pretty popular on TikTok right now. This is my view on plural marriage is changing. Um, this one stopped caring about other dudes for some reason. This one has a thousand views, which is, if you guys can see, it's pretty unusual for me. I got like fifty views on everything, right? And it has five comments, which is weird. I never, I didn't even notice because they didn't tell me. Um, anyway, so we are going to look at some of these. Hopefully, there's no private information. Um, being displayed before we think. Let's, Let's get this. Can you imagine some motherfucker told me I was too... He said I was too light-skinned. 
Um, <laughs> I don't think I'm that light skin. Uh, you on? Uh, I mean, obviously, there's people darker than me, so I'm not really, uh, uh, you know, I'm not gonna say that I'm, uh, you know, the darkest person on the planet, but I don't really think I'm that light skin. Um, anyway, so these are the four videos. We're just gonna look at them um, real quick. Each of them are short. Most of them are shorts. This one's the longest one. It's two minutes, but I think it's, uh, I think it has an important thing related to this book, right? In fact, this is actually really important. So let's just watch this and then, um, we can go from there. Let me just see what the comments are before. Uh, okay. So there's no comments. So let's just see what this is. And then, um, like we can wrap up after this. So make sure you guys ask any questions you have, uh, before we, uh, before we, we wrap it up. The real deal. This is the real deal about African spirituality. Let's talk about spirituality. Let's get this is the real deal. This is the real deal about African spirituality. Any spirituality, really. All right. So religions, the religious look at all the prophets of the religions, right? None of them are saying, hey, what did our ancestors do? Per se. What all religious groups, all spiritual systems are saying is not so much what did our ancestors do, but what is the best practice for today? You know, if you if you really pay attention, you're going to see all of them say, hey, what's the best practice for today? Some of them are saying, hey, look, even change some of your old customs to suit the new age or to suit a new agenda. Right. If you look at this guy, Moses, right, he goes over to another land. And of course, he does tell the people, hey, don't follow up all the things that other people are doing. Right. You know, we have our own you know, tradition, we have our own practice. Sure. Right. But at the same time. Understand that he's the fucking invader, right? You look at you look at Jesus. He he goes over. He he's talking to people. He's like, hey man, I know what the Gentiles do, right? I know I know what the Gentiles do. You don't have to do what they're doing, right? You don't have to do what they're doing, but we know what they're doing. We know we know we want to do that too, right? And then come to a Muhammad. Muhammad, his people are a bunch of savages. He knows. Shit, I'm saying that too loud. <laughs> I'm walking by the, the deli right now, but <laughs> but he, he knows people a bunch of savages, right? What he says though is not what he says though is not so much that people should do what their ancestors did. What he tells them is you should do another practice, a better practice. And so that's really what um religion's about. You know? If you look at Oren Miller in the Yoruba, he's coming through and he's like, look, we gotta be about the protection. Of, of, of our women. We gotta be a protection. We gotta, we gotta, don't steal because Olu Dumare is watching. That type of stuff. So what, what the whole gist of it is, is that realistically, the prophets of the religions, the prophets of the spiritual systems, they're not really saying, hey, look, this is what our ancestors are doing. They're saying, what's the best practice for today? And that's why when I write this book, I want y'all to read it and say, oh, look, only trying to spell it out. What's the best practice for today? Yeah, so you, so you kind of pick up on that. So, you see that what were um, what the ancestors were um, were saying, right? Is oh no, sorry, not what the ancestors say. What the what the prophets, not even our ancestors, but all the freaking prophets. What they're saying is, hey, adjust your life to a better practice. This is a better style that can get you ahead, that can get you powerful, that can get you uh, uh, or get you enjoying your life. A lot of them, actually, if you really think about it, were about family building. Like Christianity, Islam, uh, uh, Judaism, a lot of it really focuses on family building, community building, nation building, and race building. Okay? A lot of it. And then, and then like I said, you go to the Yoruba and you see the same thing. Because when you look at that, that, that description I showed you guys in regards to um, what the Yoruba were talking about, right? It's really... Aura Miller is not uh, Aura Miller is not saying um, uh, is not saying this is what our ancestors were doing. This is what the ancient Egyptians were doing. He's not saying that. He's saying, look, there's be no selfishness. Those who are selfish will come to bear the loads alone. There's no there's be no stealing. Even a man does not see all Dumare sees, right? Because one of the things that we have right today is like it's not a crime if you don't get caught, right? And so that could have been a concept. In 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 in, in Aaron Miller's time, and Aaron Miller was like, "Hey, look, it is still a fucking crime." And but see that right there, there's be no stealing even if a man does not see or demand. That's community building. Okay, that's community building. 
this right here, this one that I read before you guys, there's to be protection of women, women are so on and so forth. This is family building. There is to be honor and respect to the elders, the relationship to service between elders and youth to be strengthened continuously. The hand of the young does not reach the high shelf. That of the elder does not go into the gourd, right? Uh, that's, again, uh, community building. Okay? A lot of what we call religions and, 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 and spiritualities, these are just what I'm talking about. How do you improve your family, community, nation, uh, race, you know, towards the objective of life, health, and wealth. Right? And that's it. And this, is, this, is, this is what we all follow. And so, you know, I'm not necessarily going to say, oh, look, I'm writing a religious dark book. I'm not necessarily going to say, oh, look, guys, I'm, an, I'm a prophet now. You know? <laughs> but I would like the title. But I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to sit here and, and lie to you. Let's just say it that way. Right? There's to be no hypocrisy. There's to be no acts of atrocity to be committed against one's neighbor. Community building. I'm not going to say that I'm on this level. What I'm going to tell you is that I'm doing what every other reasonable people do. And that is they say, hey, what will be the best practice as far as we can tell, right? What's the best practices as far as we can tell to optimize our living experience? That's what I'm going to share. It's not really about, oh, look, this is what our ancestors were doing. This is what the ancient Egyptians were doing. Therefore, we should. This is what the uh, ancient Akam were doing. This is what, therefore, we they, they didn't say that. Or even if they did say, I, I, look again, I didn't read the Odo Ifa, so I can't tell you exactly what um, 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 uh, Oren Miller was saying. I cannot tell you that Oren Miller did not make appeals to Egypt because some people believe that Oren Miller did study in Egypt. Okay? Uh, a lot of my belief once upon a time was that a lot of people studied in Waset and they took that nation building skill outward. And that's where you have your Moses. That's where you have your Jesus. That's where you have your Muhammad. That's where you have your Oren Miller. That's where you have um, whomever else, right? I think that that's a possibility that people did go and study how to be nation builders. But what I want to say is that nation building is not just nation building. Nation building is family building. And we're going to talk about that um, right here. We have this. This one, I, I think I actually look pretty damn handsome. So y'all let, let me know if I, well, most of y'all is, is, uh, <laughs> is dudes. So you guys don't got to say, but uh, let me know if I looked at if I looked pretty damn handsome in this one. Question, everybody, is it true or false that it really goes family building, then community building, then nation building, then race building? I.e., that you have to first have a family before, you, like, if you don't have a family, for instance, right? Then, or you're not building a family, then you can't really focus or be about nation building. Like, there's no nation builder that's not first a family builder. True or false? All right, I have a question. So anyway, so like I said, some white boys engaging me on uh on TikTok over this video. Um, some people are like, "What? You got a TikTok? Don't I don't don't shadow ban me. Just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. You guys follow me and share these videos on, on YouTube. I can't be. I think whoever's somebody shadow banning me. I don't know who. Somebody's reporting me. So I don't want you going over to TikTok and, and reporting me there too. You know, although I'm pretty cool with the Chinese, so hopefully they don't do that. Anyway, Matron says, do you think religious activity can be reduced to economics? I see religion, culture, spiritual practice, and as an economy, economy organizing tool. Yeah, of course. I think, I think fundamentally, culture comes from politics. Politics comes from economics. I think the fundamentals is economics. You know, what do people can do economically? And that's why one of the issues with the religions is that they are, they are cultural artifacts. Right. And cultural artifacts come from political artifacts and political artifacts come from economic artifacts. And so what happens is that when your economy changes, your culture should change, too. And if you're holding on to a culture that does not suit the economy, that's where you run into problems. See, what happens with the, with the, with the Israeli, the ancient Israeli, is that they are a, uh, a, 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 a hunter gatherer group. You know, when people say Semitic, they're really saying Oh, these people were um, not not just hunting, uh, shepherds. They were warrior shepherds. So their economy was, hey, look, we are we are hoarding animals. We're hoarding sheep, and we're 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 marching sheep across the land. You know, we have these kingdoms, sure, but these kingdoms are based around um, people with with large amounts of livestock. You know, who fight for these large amounts of livestock. That's not even remotely. The life, like like that sort of um, um, 
culture, the culture that's really optimizes that economy, you know, hey, don't mess with my livestock type, <laughs> don't mess with my wife, don't mess with my livestock, leave my house alone, you know, let's go invade other people, let's go take their lives, let's not follow their beliefs, let's not settle down, let's not be uh, agricultural, Let, all that kind of stuff. That sort of a lifestyle does not suit today's uh, uh, economy, doesn't even suit the African economy of of because you see what R. M. Miller was talking about. What R. M. Miller was talking about was an agricultural culture, right? With with cities, in fact, they had big cities. The Yoruba did, right? Um, uh, he's talking about that kind of lifestyle. That's not even suited for today. Today we have uh, uh, we basically have what was called quote unquote capitalism. And so now the question becomes: What is the optimal lifestyle under a a a uh, capitalist or even possibly socialist system? Right? What is the optimal lifestyle? What is the optimal life plan? What is it that you want people to think about? And so one of the things I said earlier about looking at the earth uh, and its resources and trying to make something of it, that is a different mindset from what a, a hunter-gatherer may think or from what a, a, a warrior-shepherd may think, you know, or what an, even an agriculturalist may think because now we're talking about using the earth for industrial purposes, right? Or, or using the earth to create um, electricity, right? Or, or, or using the um, potential energy uh, or the kinetic energy of, of natural phenomenon for, to, 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 to make batteries, right? That is where um, we have to start changing our mindset, you know? So yeah, a lot of religious activities can be reduced to economics, of course. Uh, but but, but I, I, I do want to explain that connection as we... Um, get into the uh, into the book of power. Uh, not the book of power. The the next book that comes through. So this one's the longer thing that people actually are really engaging with. See, I said zero comments here, but it said five comments earlier. And I'm going to tell you why, right? right? Because I'm I'm as I'm maturing, I'm realizing that I, as a man, should not have an opinion on what any other man is doing unless he's a part of my organization. In which case, sure. But if you are not a part of my organization, and most men aren't, obviously, right? If they're not a part of my organization, I shouldn't give a shit what they do. Because on the real, I'm a fucking grown-ass man. I'm not dependent on no other man. Like, my whole life position is to not depend on no other man. Unless he's organizing with me. Unless it's the reason for me to be dependent on him. But if I'm not dependent on him, I don't care what he does. And that's, 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 that's on real. So I think a lot of social media is, you know, hey, what is this other person doing? Real talk, I don't care. And I don't think you should care either. Like, who cares what this other man's doing? What are you doing? And, uh, and unless he's in your organization, who cares? What's the consequence? Addendum, if he's a problem for you, kill him. It is a trap. And I'm going to tell you. I think that's the reason why it got violent because the last two seconds. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like, and, and see, I shouldn't have said the word organization. I should have said community. I should have said community. Right, it's not about because organization kind of means nothing. Oh, you're in the BLM with me, you know, but we're like on different parts of the planet. No, we have to as a people. That's what I'm saying. Like, I want to build a family, uh, build a house, have a gated house, but also a gated community. And when I'm in this gated community, it really doesn't matter what happens outside the gated community. You know what 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 what, what Oren Miller is saying, and I believe it's Oren Miller, right? But what Oren Miller said, or, or or what this summary is right here about. There's be no atrocities committed against one's neighbor. That's who you worry about, the neighbors that you have. You don't worry about, oh, well, you know, there's somebody. Like I said, if, if like, for instance, I'm in a densely populated Brooklyn area, right? Uh, if you're five blocks away from me and you're doing some, 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 some nonsense, it really doesn't have any sort of consequence for me. If you go to your neighbor five blocks away and you shoot up your neighbor, it really, the bullets do not reach me. I'll tell you that right now. They do not reach me. It doesn't affect my, I don't even know about it. I'll be honest with you, right? You're not supposed to be worried about whatever's going on across, like real talk, even across like that, you don't, you don't even care. What you care about is what is your immediate vicinity doing? So what you have to do is you have to be focused on control of your immediate vicinity. And the way how you're going to get control of your immediate vicinity, I'm not going to say you can't do it in the U.S. There's a, there's a, there's a ceiling. You're not going to be able to be national leadership in the U.S. You're not going to be able to impact national leadership uh, to the same extent. What you are going to be able to do, however, 
in, 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 in you can do this in Africa. So, like I said, if I go and have a nice gated community in Africa, we're good. You know, we could be like, hey, can the can the treasurer visit us? We want to talk about something. We can have that going on. Like we we can really accomplish quite a bit um, if we if we if we if we get serious. And that's that's pretty much the gist of 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 of, of that message. But like, I stopped caring about other dudes. Like, I don't care what other people do anymore. Um, I think this is the last video, the one on the plural marriages, and we could talk about that. Plural marriages is evolving. And here's the premise, because I don't think it's an ancestral practice. I'm not going to tell you that it's an ancestral practice. That's ridiculous, right? What I'm going to tell you is this. If there is a woman that you want to protect, that you want to look after your future, your generations, whatever, right? Marry her. And if there is two women that you feel like you want to protect, that you feel that you can protect, that you want to live in a home uh, for generations to come, marry both of them. It's that simple. That This is the whole premise of you as a man is that, hey, look, I found the lady that I want to look after my kids. I found a woman that I want to stand in front of and protect. That's why you marry her. And if you find two of them, you find two beautiful souls that are compatible with you, then, and you can protect both of them, then do it. My view on plural marriages. Yeah, so actually, I don't know if I, that was actually a necessary video to show. <laughs> but, you know, it's just an interesting idea. Like I said, you know, what, when you start talking about a philosophy of, or you start rationalizing how to optimize your life, you begin to realize, look, as a man or as, as a woman, what do you want? What do you want? Like, what, do you, what is your role on this, in this, in, on this planet? And, and I think that's actually a really important question in light of, like I said, I had a poll um, recently, right? And so one of the polls on, uh, on, on, uh, on Twitter, right, related to uh, that question. So I said, decided to go on camera today, right? Uh, related to this question. So this question was, if race, it really goes family building, community building, nation building, and race building, if you haven't built a family, you aren't serious about nation building, true or false, right? And so most people said, uh, one person says false, and I think they, they might have replied. And they said, look, and this is a cool guy, Jolof, he's a cool guy, right? He says, everyone has a role and not everyone's role is the same. Not everyone is meant to be constricted to a family. Some think on a level that goes beyond community. Others aren't sophisticated enough to think on the level of a nation. To say that if one hasn't built a family, they aren't serious about nation building is a very short-sighted and obtuse way of thinking. And that's okay! But here's what I want to say, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably address this after the poll, because one of the things about polls is that you don't want to have an opinion before the poll is finished. So within four hours or whatever, right? But I think I wrote this to, uh, to a brother, so I think I could... Uh, and explain this. Let me just see if I could uh, pull it up. Uh, uh, but but it's something along the lines of uh, as an organism. Let me see if I can find it. Actually, uh, as an organism, you should be about self propagation, barring infertility, and moreover protection and nurturing of the youth. You know, and and, and so just on an organizational level, right? Just as a as an entity of 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 a biological organism, just as a biological unit, you should want to propagate. Because what do you what, what else what else do you know? Everything else is doing. How else were you? How else did you come here? But through um, somebody else's uh, effort of self propagation. Now, of course, if you're inf infertile, that's different. But, uh, but as an organism, you should be about that. And so when we talk about family building, right, we're talking about this biological imperative for you. And then on top of that, we talk about, well, not everybody has that role. No, you as a man should be, hey, you know what? I'm going to stand in front of these women. I'm going to stand in front of these children. And obviously, you know, there's a limit to which women and which children. You know, maybe not which children, but, uh, you know, even so, like, which women and which children, right? Um, but that's where family comes in, because now you're making a declaration. These women and these children are under my protection as a man. 
And you as a woman are saying, these women and these children, no, these women or these children are under my, my protection and my nurturing. This, this is where my resources are going to, making these children better off, making their destiny, like transforming their destiny to be better, optimizing their life potentiality. And that's pretty much uh, what I want to say on that subject in the sense of, uh, in the sense of, yeah, you know, we are now, like I said, if you're in the West, I don't know if this brother's in the West, but if you're in the West, you're thinking, you know what, maybe my role is not in the propagation of my genetic um, um, material. Maybe it's not in the propagation, maybe it's not in the reproduction of my human, my human being. Maybe it's not in the protection of, of children. Maybe children, maybe families are constricting of me. You know, maybe propagating myself is a constriction on me. And again, this is a smart brother. This is not this is not just any like this is a brother who just called me short sighted and obtuse for writing what I just wrote. So he he gotta be smarter than me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he gotta be smarter than me. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't know why somebody would call me uh uh short sighted and obtuse unless they were smarter than me. So this is a this is a so if you think I'm smart, this brother's even smarter than me. But that's what I'm trying to p p t tell you guys, that uh, the, 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 the mentality, right, that, that what constitutes the optimization of life is not a consistent phenomenon across the, the, the African uh, world. And that's why all of the people before us, they wrote books. And there were more books, there were more books than the ones that we, 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 we come to, but some of them... Um, uh, uh, you know, survived longer than others. You know? Some of them survived longer than others. Not because they're better. Uh, not because they're worse. But some of them survived longer than others. Right? And, 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 and you could see, hey, look, if we don't make a stand for, you know what, family's not a constriction. Or, you know what, you could organize family in such a way that uh, things is going okay. Right? Things are going okay in the household. You know, like, for instance, like I said, one of these sisters that I, uh, um, like a lot of sisters, for instance, in Africa, they have uh, um, house help, you know? Now, the question is how, how you know, a lot of people not, don't, might not necessarily treat their house help well. That's why you have to bring the philosophy of, oh, well, treat the house help well. Or you could say, hey, you know what? Don't. That's, that's what, that's what um, Islam does. Don't even treat them well. Oh, they're not even uh, Muslim. Don't even treat them well. You know? Uh, it's, it's, again, family Community, nation, race building. This is what spirituality is all about. And what we have to remember is that not everybody's going to agree with you. So you have to uh, come across a, a, a philosophy. And, and, and not just that, you're not going to be exposed to every good idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a collection of good ideas. And you can, um, you can use that to optimize your life. All right? Um, it, you might not necessarily use everything, but you could use. Uh, but I'm I'm pretty sure you're gonna use. You you you, you will be intrigued. All right. Uh, Matron says your community should be local if it's going to be effective. Exactly. Nothing is more local than your family. Exactly. And 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 and, and like I said, you first develop your family, then you develop your community, then you develop your nation. Okay. And this is why a lot of us have to relocate to Africa. Because if you really want to be about nation building, if you really want to be about family building, community building, you want your family and community within a nation that you really want to build, that you really want to develop. Because see, I could have a nice family in America, but then am I, am I there? And, 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 and I can say for me personally, I might have to you know, spend some time in America for whatever reason, whatever, whatever things I might need, whatever. But that's why... I would need a good woman in Africa who um, um, who watches over my property while I'm gone. And it's going to be a safe area. You know, and it don't even have to be, and like I said, I said a good woman, it could be for you, it could be good women. Right? For you, it could be, uh, 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 you could be in a good community. You know, it don't even, you don't even have to have anybody in your house. Or whatever. You got your neighbor looking after your property. Who knows? My point being that you have to connect with some sort of community. 
some sort of family structure. And when you do that, things are going to be better for you. But that's all the time I have. Well, not all the time I have. I have more time. But if nobody wants to engage, not that nobody's engaging, because I appreciate Matron um, and, and everybody else before her. Um, but um, if nobody else has any other comments, I don't want to take up all you guys' time because I value your time as well. So let me just shout out all the people that were here. And again, you guys could type uh, anything that you might have concern. Or if you like this podcast, you know, make sure you guys not just do the like. You can share it. You can, you can so on and so forth. But you can also drop fire emojis. Let me know um, that, that, that you're digging this. Obviously, you guys can do the super chat. Psych! There's not enough people watching. <laughs> but anyway, but Matron, uh, shout out to Matron. She came here first. Shout out to her. Cassidra Cheek was here. Shout out to her. Ish Kepri was here. Uh, 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 so shout out. Uh, Mr. Black Reparation, shout out. Obito, God, says, oh, look, it's Barack Obama, but still, shout out. Black Indie Dev is here, so shout out. Uh, and Kenneth was here, so a big shout out. So appreciation to everybody that came through. Uh, no other questions. Let me just close it out with Shamiam Hotep. I go in peace. Anku Jas and Neb. Neb, master life, health, wealth. Uh, uh, <laughs> Amen. Ma'ad. And do I nature, you know, so and you guys should know what that is. All right. Zemi Motep. <laughs>